content advisory warning. This episode contains heavy discussion of transphobia, including systemic transphobia, assaults, and harassment by members of the gender critical movement. Viewer discretion is highly advised. Sup nerds, I'm Kappa Joey, and today I'm going to be asking the question, are mums net trans friendly? The answer may shock- no, it won't shock you at all, the answer is no, but there's a clear reason for that and I want to analyse that now. Now, as Mumsnet has unfortunately had to bear the brunt of being the most transphobic forum dedicated just for mums in the UK, they are trying to repair their image as these transphobic bullies. Which, granted, yes, it is a little bit bizarre that a forum dedicated just to middle-class mums discussing parenting tips would go down the let's all hate trans people route. But I guess there was a moral panic where they all started worrying that their kids might grow up to be trans, so that may be where it came from. However, I do want to reiterate that there is a really pervasive plague of trans hate on Mumsnet. They have actually lost advertising sponsors due to the fact that their transphobia is so rampant, which is a little bizarre because advertisers don't normally pay attention to trans issues. It's also where Graham Linehan went. Yes, Graham Linehan went on Mumsnet, a forum for mothers, blowing his war horn and lighting the beacons for the Kingdom of Turfdor where he gathered his army to prevent a charity that supports transgender children from getting funding. I'll just show you this small clip from Harry Brewis, also known as Bob a guy on YouTube at the XOXO Festival, just talking about what happened shortly afterwards. A small thing I did was in January this year I raised around $340,000, $350,000 for a, a trans charity in the UK to spite a former comedy writer. Um, <laughs> So, we should probably begin with Mermaids. Mermaids is a charity that provides resources and support for children with gender dysphoria, uh, children who are trans or non-binary, and also helps parents come to terms with that, because very often, especially in Britain, we have no idea when any of this stuff is. So, having there actually be organizations whose job is to explain it to you is a, a really, really great thing. However, there are some people who don't like trans people, just a little bit, I don't know, just, just don't seem to like them really, I'm not really sure. Um, I'm sure they believe they have good reasons, but we're not going to entertain them here because they're not. Um, <laughs> which... <laughs> which brings us to Graham Linehan. Um, he uh, used to write uh, for comedic TV shows and take the credit for other people's jokes. He's, you know, he's... He, he's got some things to say about uh, trans people, and he's very sure that he knows uh, what women want, and it's his job to fight for them, to his satisfaction. Um, he fancies himself a feminist activist, but the radical kind that believe the solution to women's problems is to exclude trans people. I wish there was a word for that, uh, <laughs> but... In case you're interested, uh, Graham's Wikipedia page has a whole section for his anti-transgender activism, and it contains this enlightening sentence. Linehan has compared transgender activism to Nazi Germany. Uh, the nuanced understanding haver has logged on. Um, so in December of last year, when most other um, rich white men with careers in television are probably thinking about where they're going to take a vacation to, Graham had heard that mermaids were being awarded £500,000 by the National Lottery uh, to try to expand their operation, and uh, he took to Mumsnet to do something about it. Now, what is Mumsnet? Uh, Mumsnet is a forum in the UK for mothers and Graham Linehan uh, <laughs> to complain about trans people. Uh, and you can see here, he told everyone who read this thread uh, to mass email a woman who happens to work for the National Lottery to complain about what had just happened. Uh, and this resulted in uh, the funding being put under review while the National Lottery tried to figure out why they were getting hundreds of complaints from weirdos. Uh, they had to figure out if they were being sent because they genuinely made a mistake, because they do take themselves very seriously and they, they really do want to consider people's criticisms. They had to figure out if that was why or if because a famous person had told them to. Uh, we'll find out more about that later. Uh, anyway, 
I decided to do something about it, but in my own personal way, where it's a horrible mess, and that way I'm not responsible for if it goes bad, because it, who, who would have expected it to? So there's, a, there's an old game called Donkey Kong 64. Um, you might have... Uh, okay. Uh, and it's... <laughs> Basically, it takes ages if you want to complete it fully, and no one should ever do it. I never beat it as a kid, because even as a child, I had patience. I uh, decided the time would come, and I should do this for, uh, for Mermaids. So I made a video announcing it, um, 8.30 p.m. Uh, on January the 18th, and uh, just said this is why I was doing it. I feel like the conversation, especially in Britain, about trans issues is just woefully rubbish. Just complete waste of time. Um, and at the end of the video, I remember saying, I hope to see you all there, have a great night, don't forget to moisturize, and fuck you, Graham. <laughs> and this highlights for me at the time what the stream embodied to me. I definitely recommend watching the whole video, which I'll put down in the description if you can, because Harry does give credence to a lot of the trans and non-binary creators and streamers that helped him out, and it's genuinely a lovely video. It gave me a bit of a platonic crush on him, to be honest. I think that it's extremely telling that when Graham Lynn had wanted to launch this attack on the healthcare of trans children, the first place he thought to go to was Mumsnet. A mum's that they also condone and defend Graham Linhan's transphobia quite often, which, I mean, we're not the ones bullying him when you look at the evidence side by side. It's also worth noting that many people who go on Mumsnet and portray this friendly mumsy persona are also very active on the alt-right hate website Kiwi Farms. If you don't know what Kiwi Farms is, lucky you. <laughs> That's all I have to say. But Kiwi Farms is an online alt right hate forum dedicated purely to attacking trans people, disabled people, Jewish people, Muslims, etc. Think, you know, 4chan and Encyclopedia Dramatica vibes, except this time they can all private message one another. A lot of mums netters will go on to say that they're not remotely hateful, and that it's just concern, and that they're just worried about where self-identification will take us. But if that were the case, then surely they wouldn't be getting involved in an alt-right hate website. They wouldn't be creating threads on Mumsnet where they proudly show off the transphobic comics that they found on Kiwi Farms. This I found after it was tweeted by my good friend Joss Pryor, who has dealt with a lot of hate from Mumsnetters. Also, on Kiwi Farms, this one person called Spinster, which, you know, is a nod towards another transphobic hate website, says, can I start a thread for Mumsnetters? Hello, I have found this forum through Mumsnet. As you may have gathered, there are quite a few Mumsnetters migrating to these forums. May I start a welcome thread for them? If yes, which balls would be best for this? <laughs> Thank you for your time, I look forward to your response. The same concerned Mumsnetter goes on to post in another thread entitled MOST PHYSICALLY REPULSIVE TRANNY a place where they talk about which transgender person they find the ugliest, and a place where I, myself, have been featured. That's feminism. Now, while I could bang on forever about the absolutely terrible things that are said by the users of Mums now, I really wanted to have a look at their policy. Now, they do actually have separate guidelines called Netica, where they say things like no spamming, no trolling, but this is the first social media forum I've come across where they've actually created separate rules for how you have to talk about trans people, right? Normally, it's just covered within the no hate speech rule, you know, like don't be transphobic, don't be racist, don't be homophobic, you know, Bob's your uncle. But the problem is they don't consider transphobia to be hate speech, which is why they've had to like create all of these new rules around what they consider to be truly hateful around trans people. It's just, it's an absolute mess. So I wanted to, you know, dissect their guidelines. They have worded it in that same, you know, soft, 
gentle white lady, JK Rowling-esque way. It's like plastic platitudes. They're pretending to be our friends, but really when you actually look at the language and you deconstruct what they're saying, it's not at all. So it starts off with, Mum's net will always stand in solidarity with vulnerable or oppressed minorities. Now, this is in bold, okay? They want us to notice that straight away. So, what are they not saying when they say Mum's net will always stand in solidarity with vulnerable or oppressed minorities? Or rather, what are they trying to make you think they are saying? Now, if I say transgender people are a vulnerable, oppressed minority. I'd like to think that my audience would definitely agree with me, but I think that m most people who understand a bit about trans issues and how it affects our daily lives would agree that, yeah, we kind of get the, the shitty end of the stick a lot. So in your mind, trans people are given the shitty end of the stick a lot. They are the vulnerable or oppressed minority. If Mumsnet always stands in solidarity with vulnerable or oppressed minorities, therefore, what they want you to infer from this is that Mumsnet will always stand in solidarity with trans people. Unless you don't actually consider trans people to be a vulnerable or oppressed minority, which those of us that consider us to be perverts, when we are painted as these monstrous people that are just here to take away rights. We're not exactly being shown as the oppressed minority though, are we? We're being seen as the oppressor. And in case you don't think that that's the impression that they're trying to give, I am just going to show you a screenshot from what was posted <laughs> by a Mumsnetter on Mumsnet, which is still there now. Uh, Mumsnet did not consider this to break any of their rules. And it is saying that according to trans logic, trans women are really men and therefore men are becoming oppressed by women who, you know, it makes no sense. It's that idea of, oh, well, because they, they can't have cis privilege because cis is just normal. It's like saying if you have a dog, like, no, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to potentially not have a job given to me or you know had harassment in the street because i've got a dog it's just a ridiculous mind-blowing comparison to make mum's net is also committed to freedom of speech sometimes these two principles come into conflict rarely more so than within the recent debate about what it is acceptable to say or not to say about trans people and changing opinions about gender and sex now this is going back to that classic argument about how the political correctness has gone mad and we're not even allowed to sing bar bar black sheep in schools anymore. Let's say that I got drunk and went round my ex's house at one in the morning, banged on her door and started screaming obscenities. When the police come, I'm not going to be like, well, it's my freedom of speech. It's a free country. If I think that she is a bloody awful person, then I am allowed to stand in the street and shout that as my right as a British citizen. <laughs> Like, no, it, it doesn't give you the right to be hateful. And if you paint all trans people as this evil, shadowy organisation, and yeah, I actually got accused of reporting back to a shadowy organisation. I'm going to flash out the screen here now. I got accused of reporting back to a shadowy organisation through secret messages in Monday tweets. I'm just trans. <laughs> I am just trans. <laughs> Right, so with this, when they talk about changing opinions about gender and sex, it's essentially saying, oh, we're, we're not too pleased that tolerance for trans people is now in vogue. <laughs> you know, just put it like that. Some have criticised Mumsnet for allowing posts that some trans people find offensive, even hateful. Others have complained that we have censored comments which broke no laws and deserve to be hurt. The use of some and the use of others in these two sentences, especially when they're put side by side, is really interesting. So when they say some trans people find offensive, even hateful, it is giving the impression that it is just a small amount of trans people, that most trans people are perfectly happy with the things that are being said about us on Mumsnet, and it's just a small amount that find it offensive. Also, the sum when it goes next to others, right? Who are the others? Is it other trans people or people who are against trans rights? 
it plays it down as the transphobia on their website being something that just bothers a few people and then others is just brushed off it we don't even know who they say some trans people they could have said some criticized mom's net for allowing posts that some find offensive even hateful and others have complained but no they pointed out that it's some trans people and then others is kept vague which i find really interesting and then they go on to say to try and create a more civil and mutually respectful discussion we are spelling out a few principles for how discussions about trans issues will be moderated on mom's net this is just a generic sentence um I'm, it's very neutral so let's get on to what the guidelines actually say it starts off with we believe in free speech and civil debate so we will for instance allow people to discuss biology and scientific evidence which is such a huge duck whistle if i was going to talk about transness from a purely biological point of view then i may talk about hormone replacement therapy because it does change a lot about your body it's not just a cosmetic thing but the thing is is that they're not interested in that because they will put it down to well what gametes do you produce and things like that and it's all just a way to discredit trans identities that who we are and how we go about life is somehow completely erased by one cell that our body may or may not produce scientific evidence they say scientific evidence but they ignore things like endocrinology neurology psychology things where every single bloody expert in these scientific fields have agreed that trans identities are valid they do not want to bloody well hear it they just want to shout gametes and that's the end of the day we don't allow posts which are derogatory or aggressive towards trans people we believe there are ways to express both an opinion and facts without crossing this line so it's like look you're allowed to hate trans people just don't call them a slur when you do it and the thing is is that that's why there are a lot of mums nettles on kiwi farms because they can do it on kiwi farms and kiwi farms doesn't care they are not friendly towards trans people they're definitely derogatory <laughs> sweeping negative generalizations about any group including trans people oh and this is this is an interesting part and gender critical feminists won't be tolerated okay now the really interesting thing is that so many gender criticals try and claim we're not against trans people we're just against trans rights activists but this actually says trans people it actually puts trans people and gender critical people at uh, loggerheads at odds with each other which is interesting so if i said i think all gender critical people are just just hate trans people they would not allow that as a negative generalization despite the fact that they allow people to call us sex offenders another interesting thing is that they say trans people and gender critical feminists feminists okay I personally do not consider gender critical people to be feminists because they have been incredibly misogynistic. There's there's nothing feminist about the gender critical movement. So the fact that Mumsnet is saying, oh, they are feminists, it's showing a clear preference here. Trans people, generic, we are people who are trans, that's fine. Then, and gender critical feminists. Free speech by definition applies to all. For a debate to take place, opposing views which follow our talk guidelines, which is the netiquette that I mentioned earlier, need to be tolerated, even if you disagree with them. Which is basically just being be polite. But the thing is, is that my friend, she was uh, banned from mum's net for using the word cis. So you're not allowing a debate to take place as you're not even allowing the language. And we can't talk about the differences between cis and trans experiences purely because they want cis people to be called normal. It's just a way of denying who we are. Like, no, you're not allowed to say cis because they're trans people on the same level as the cis people. It's, it's just not at all acceptable. It goes, we won't allow aggressive or rude behaviour towards our moderation team. Again, this is generic. I can't say, oh, you should allow us to send you a poo in the post. You know, like, no, that, that, that's fine. If you cannot accept the above principles and persistently ignore them, then I'm afraid you need to accept that mum's there isn't the right place for you. And the thing is, is that they created this not because they wanted to um, allow trans people to be on the boards, but because mum's letters were so aggressively transphobic they needed to create this because they were losing sponsorships and money and all of that. Now if I scroll down right to the bottom, 
you'll see this was created by the CEO and founder in 2018. So this has been up for two and a half years now. I'm going to keep going because the language of this is interesting. That said, it's clear that most trans people find the use of pronouns or names that they or others have consciously rejected to be hurtful and therefore struggle to engage in a discussion with those who insist on using them. Same is true with the expression trans identified male or Tim. And these two, these are slurs okay it's it's like the t slur and essentially by saying tim or timothy or tiff or tiffany a trans identified male as they put it they mean a trans woman by that here they say that you're not allowed to misgender people and then they say likewise many feminists are affronted by the term cis and turf okay i have not come across a single feminist that is affronted by the term cis or the term turf. That is absolutely ridiculous. The only people who are affronted by those terms are transphobic or gender critical, as they like to put it, which is just a subset of transphobia. So the, using these terms will make civil debate less likely. Look, if you have harboured an environment where there's not going to be civil debate if the term cis is used or the term turf because you all hate trans people so much then that is your fault that is not our fault you know and it's it's absolutely horrible that they're putting these things on the same level it says, as you can appreciate, this is a challenging issue to moderate, and very often decisions are subjective. As such, there are about to be a few inconsistencies. We strongly believe, however, that those abiding by the spirit of constructive and civilised discussion not be at risk of being banned for any length of time. So it's fine to talk about how gross you find trans people, but you just have to talk about it in a respectful way. <laughs> we do not want mums that to feel to be a place that feels inherently hostile to any group, be that trans. Um, it is though! It is. You have created a group that is overtly hostile towards trans people. Like, this is the nice face that they put on before going to Kiwi Farms. Like, how can you consider yourself a place for mothers and a place for parenting? A place where you pride yourself on child rearing and then write letters to prevent transgender children from getting healthcare because you think they are the wrong children to get healthcare? and then not consider your place a hostile environment for trans people? <laughs> Fuck mums that. So they continue with the empty platitudes about how this is all just to encourage debate and how it's okay that we can have differing opinions and you are allowed to hate trans people, we hate them too, but we don't want to look transphobic, so you, so you got to talk about it in different ways. The whole rebranding from turf to gender critical reminds me exactly of the rebranding of like racists to race realists as they call themselves. They were calling themselves TERFs because they were considering themselves to be radical feminists and they were transgender exclusionary. So they called themselves TERFs. Then TERF became synonymous with being a bigot because that's what it is and they were like oh no we're looking transphobic we don't want to look transphobic we want to look like we're just worried that women are under attack by evil trans people let's call ourselves gender critical so then it looks like there's some thinking and analysis that's gone into it however the most interesting thing here is the clarifications not even a week after this was posted, they had to clarify so much because of the amount of lines and tiptoeing and what hateful things are we allowed to say, god damn it. So it starts off with some questions just about how they're going to work around suspensions and deletions and how that all works. But then it goes, will you be including the expression TRA, meaning trans rights activists, in your list? It goes, we don't think this is a slur per se, but as ever, we'll keep an eye on context and tone. You said turf was a slur. You said turf was a slur and that cis was a slur. The difference is self-ID. Turfs called themselves turfs and then realised, oh crap, this is making me look like a transphobe. They deliberately called us TRA to link it to MRA. Then it says, am I allowed to criticise someone for their actions or express a negative view on them even if they happen to be trans? And of course, yes, we encourage it even. Even if they're a good person, why not call them a cunt? <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> 
this is just this is just such a fake worry like they have this weird idea that you know not being a dick to trans people means that you have to treat us like our fart smell of lavender you know and that's just not the case this is weird thing of oh well you're not allowed to criticize anyone now you're not allowed to say anything about him because he's trans you know like it's just it's not how it works Will you be considering deleting posts that associate transgender people with autogynophilia AGP? Now, autogynophilia, as they call it, is a scientific falsehood. It's wrong. It's something which has been proven to be scientifically inaccurate. So all of this stuff way up here... We believe in free speech and civil debate, so we will, for instance, allow people to discuss biology and scientific evidence. However, scientific evidence says that autogynophilia, which just paints trans women as perverts living a 24-7 fetish, is a false science, and yet you are looking at it on a case-by-case -case basis. Oh, that's ridiculous. I just had a quick Google of AGP help, please, where they're talking about how AGPs can get so caught up in their thrill-seeking that they take it to the extent of a transition when they're talking about gentle surgery. Whether they still get any thrills after the fact is moot point. The damage is done by them. This is one of the many, many reasons why the delusion that people can change sex should never be pandered to in the first place. I would have thought surgeries was the ultimate expression of AGP. I'm not suggesting all post-op trans women are AGP, by the way. I'm not sure if... <laughs> oh, yeah, pretty quickly put that in the, to not generalise yourselves. AGP can become so intense that it leads to gender dysphoria and then surgical treatment. And this is no longer a mental health issue. This is not an issue! It isn't the case that cisgender men are suddenly becoming so obsessed with the fetish of becoming women that they then have genital surgery and then go, oh, what have I done? They're not Mr. Garrison from South Park. Yet they say that they will definitely delete posts which generalise while talking about an incorrect science that paints trans people as fetishists. Then it goes on to say, will I be deleted for saying male woman or male trans person or male person or for including them as part of the male population? <laughs> you know, because trans women aren't part of the male population. It's like a weird transphobic no homo. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, I get that you're female. No bio. Like, it just doesn't make any bloody sense. If it's said with the apparent intention of belittling an individual, we'll likely take that view as it has progressed beyond the discussion of facts as biology. Wow, and you really don't think it, <laughs> towards a personal attack, and you really don't think it's a personal attack to just bring up their genitals in the first place as, and say that that's their defining feature? You absolute creeps. Can I use the expression TIM, trans identified male, they mean women, well, you know, trans women, in conversation with one another, as long as we don't use it in a conversation with someone who is themselves transgender. It's like, so we are allowed to be transphobic as long as no trans people are on the forums, right? Like, these are public forums. We can see you being transphobic. We're likely to delete this term however it's used. Trans identify seems pretty goady. People generally don't identify as trans, but as the opposite sex. I just disagree with that. It's so binary and it's so wrong and it just completely disregards intersex people as well. It goes on to say, as somebody said on this thread, one person cannot tell another how they identify even if they disagree with the logic. Nobody's going to understand all identities. There's some identities that I personally don't understand, but it doesn't matter because it doesn't need my understanding. It just needs my respect. You're never going to respect them because it's all dependent on, oh, I only care about who you are if I can understand what it's like to be you. Like, surely they understand what it's like to be themselves. They don't need you to do that. You know, it's, it's, it, it is sad. Can we refer to the fact that some individuals have male sex organs? It goes, we'd be likely to allow discussion of an individual's transition status if it's absolutely necessary to the discussion. But intrusive discussion of an individual's genitals is likely to be deleted. It's none of your business. It is none of your business what sex organs we do or do not have 
as trans people it is the business of us any medical professionals that may have to deal with our genitals as part of our healthcare and any lovers that we may have that interact with them it is not the business of boring transphobic mums on a forum for bougie middle class hate filled losers And of course, they can't have any way of talking or discussing trans issues without bringing in a trans sex offender. They've said, what about, for example, Karen White? Is it okay to say he is a man and call him he? And they have chosen something which a lot of cisgender people may see that and think, yeah, if it's a bad trans person, why should they get my respect? But I'm going to go into the issues with that later. They say... We think we've allowed for flexibility and context here. We're unlikely to delete where an individual is primarily known for extreme or criminal actions undertaken before they transitioned. So the idea is that if they were living life pre-transition, committed a crime, or, or rather an extreme crime, that they could be misgendered and that it doesn't matter because they're an awful person, so why should they be respected anyway? And it is very easy to get into that line of thinking with something as serious as sex offence. You definitely get it with Jessica Yaniv as well, she is one of the other ones that always pops up. Cisgender women can be sex offenders and people are going to suddenly call them he because they're sex offenders. However, when they talk about Carol White and Jessica Yaniv, it is this idea of sex offence is something inherently male and therefore they should not be granted female status based on the fact that they are sex offenders. And the thing is, is that there are going to be these awful people in every group. However, I'm not dangerous because I'm a trans person just because people like Karen White and Jessica Yaniv exist. Another issue is that where do you set the limit, okay? We could say, okay, there's person A, they are transgender, they have killed puppies, therefore they should not be treated with respect and can be misgendered. It's like, well, we can all agree that killing puppies is a very bad thing. None of us like Rella DeVille, or if we do, it's purely for her fashion choices, which actually were around killing puppies, so, so maybe not those either. But um, You can't then say, okay, we will no longer treat that person's gender with dignity, because where do you set the limit? Is the person that stole from you now no longer allowed dignity? Is it somebody with whom you've argued? And I've had it, and so many other trans people have, where you've had somebody who you thought respected you, was a good friend, and then the second you have an argument over something petty, they dead name you and misgender you, and it's like, oh, so you never actually respected me in the first place. And no, I don't have any respect for Karen White, but I have a respect for transness, and that is what I'm showing respect to. It's not her that I give a shit about. I don't care about these people, they're awful people. You can call Karen White a piece of shit without misgendering her. I think she's an awful piece of shit. She's a terrible human being, and she's a woman. I also want to go back just a little bit before I wrap things up. I realise this whole thing about like, oh, we, we don't want intrusive discussions of individuals' genitals. What is the whole Staniland question about that? Why? Why? <laughs> What? How can you say that you're... Wow, this was just a month ago. Delightful. Like, they are going on and on and on about the Staniland question about male sex people. It was literally originally male-bodied people with a penis that she kept saying. And now... Oh, no, it's not good news. It's gross. I don't know how they actually... How they think that they're the good people. How, it's, it's like a, a real a we the baddies. You are just spending all of your time hating a minority and you think you're doing a good thing. Oh, I hope this long, 
long analysis of the mum's neck guide lines on how to talk about trans rights have shown that no, no, they don't give a shit about us. <laughs> I need a drink. <laughs> oh, this is this has been a tough one. I'm absolutely exhausted, folks. It's been a tough week for me. I really, I really do hope that you enjoyed this episode, or that you might have learned something from it, or that you might have had a little chuckle. I really do, but. That's it for Mum's Set, unless we get any further clarifications, which I doubt that we will, given that this was the last updated uh, just under two years ago. Yeah, no, about two years ago. Um, I'm, I'm, I've not got much hope. <laughs> um, but that's it for Mum's Net and the exact way in which you're allowed to politely talk about how you consider trans people to be less than human. Well, my lovely little couplings, that is it for our lengthy and arduous look at Mum's Nets Rules. I really, I really do hope that everyone enjoyed listening to this, because it was bloody hard work. And don't forget, if you would like to become part of the tea set, then all you need to do is hit that subscribe button. If you want to give this video a like, it really does piss off the gender criticals. They tend to spam dislike me a lot, so that would really help out. If you want to help me out even further, the details of my Kofi and my Patreon are in the description of this video where you could get your name in the credits on videos just like these. I would love to know what you thought in the comments and whether you'd like to see more kind of linguistic deep dives like this because this was like the mashup of language and trans issues so it's just right up my street. And until the next episode my lovely little couplings, I will see you all next time.